What's up class and welcome back to another lesson in the no mod shop class here on the school zone in today's lesson I'll be showing you how to remove those annoying things you want to get rid of in your settlement that can be moved But respawn the best example of this are those darn ghoul corpses here at sunshine tidings co-op And all this can be done of course without mods now This is just a quick mini lesson today, but it's something a lot of people have asked about I'm actually hard at work on two longer videos the top 15 settlement ideas video based on viewer submissions missions for the build contest and my showcase tour of home plate both things viewers have also asked about just wanted to let you guys know that they are in the works and I'll be posting them soon I think sometimes viewers get frustrated or even unsubscribe when I can't put out more than a couple of videos per week because they get so used to channels like Oxhorn and Juicehead you know who put out daily content so you guys have to understand those guys are doing YouTube full-time they don't have day jobs like me the combination of their ad revenue merch sales sponsorships brand brand deals and Patreon accounts all pays their bills and then some. I'm working extremely hard to get to that point, but I'm not quite there yet. I still have a day job. I also don't like resorting to spamming you guys or clickbaiting for views. You know, I try to maintain integrity here on YouTube. Some people might even argue that's the wrong way to go, but I'm, I'm in it for the long haul. You know, I want to build trust among my viewers. I'm also single. I don't live in my parents' basement and I don't have anyone paying my bills for me. So that just means it's a slower process to do this full time. If you like what I do on the channel, then the best thing you can do is either spread the word or become a Patreon yourself. I think the combination of my growing Patreons and reaching, you know, about 300,000 subs might be the turning point where I can finally leave the day job in the dust. Hopefully that's not too far down the road. Until then, I hope you guys can stay subscribed and bear with me. I, you know, I really appreciate all your support. Okay, so let's get to it. So one of the most frustrating things about building at Sunshine Tidings Co-op are those super annoying respawning ghoul corpses. I've done everything to try to get rid of them. I've blasted them into pieces with my exploding shotgun. I hid the pieces in the bushes. I've tried to build things over them and they just pop to the surface. I even dragged the corpses outside of the settlement boundaries only to find them respawn back in the same spot. However, according to a viewer named Lunaper, I was simply not dragging the corpses far enough. He sent me a message that if I drag the corpses far enough away from the settlement boundaries, then they'll remain marked as moved and not removed. So they won't ever respawn. Now I was stunned at this notion and did some experimenting myself. I dragged two of the corpses well into the next cell loading zone and then dragged one corpse just over the next hill. That way I could tell when the reset had taken place. Now that was over a month ago and the experiment seems to have worked. The one corpse I dragged only a short distance has respawned here, but the other two corpses have not. If you guys are familiar with Sunshine Tidings here, there's a corpse. What's up, Eddie? There's a corpse that usually spawns right around here. And there's a corpse that spawns where this bathtub used to be right about here. I think there may even be a few others in some of the other uh, little cabins, but I haven't uh, messed with those yet. I wanted to just, you know, try a few out because it does take a while dragging the corpses away. Anyway, the solution seems so simple, but it actually seems to work. And according to Lunaper, it should work for any other draggable objects that you don't want to respawn in your settlement. Now, I can't think of what those might be other than corpses, but maybe you guys might have some ideas. Here, let me uh, <laughs> get rid of the rain again real quick. Okay, what I'm gonna do while I'm blabbing here is we are gonna test this on this corpse here. And uh, I'm just gonna show you, let, let's pick a place on the map where I, where I can drag it to someplace a little different. Uh, why don't we drag it to, see I dragged one, let's see, where, where did I drag it to? Yeah, I dragged it to here. You know what? Let's drag it all the way to Abernathy Farm, and uh, that way I can actually prop him up somewhere, and we can see if he actually stays in Abernathy Farm, okay? So I'm going to mark this on the map. Let's see here. And then I'll probably play, you guys like that Betty Hill music, so I'll probably play some Betty Hill music while I drag him over there. Now you got to have some patience to do this because it will take a while, but hopefully you'll only have to do it once per game. So it might be worth the extra time, you know? So how far exactly is a cell loading zone anyway? Now, I don't know the exact measurements on that. Some people who have played around with the creation kit might have some ideas they can leave down below. But simply speaking, it's the distance from two points on a game map where loading occurs to populate a new region. If you want to be safe, just carry them a bit further than necessary. As part of my experiment here at Sunshine, I dragged one corpse all the way to the glowing sea 
and then the other one to the Drumlin Diner. Neither one have returned yet, and it's been over a month. That one other corpse has already respawned. Now, I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that settlements are all going to be within their own separate loading cells. Even Home Plate isn't a separate loading cell than Diamond City. You know, you walk through the door and uh, you have a loading screen real quick before you enter. So if you're ever in doubt, you can always just drag the corpses to the next settlement. And you don't have to put them in the settlement. You can put them somewhere else outside the settlement. And as long as they're not from within that settlement, then they shouldn't respawn. I haven't tested yet on the respawning settlers at Kingsport Lighthouse, but it should work in theory at any settlement. And if the theory holds, you can probably chop the corpse that's stuck in the ceiling at Crew Manor into pieces and then carry each piece into the next cell loading zone. And by the way, if you want to have some fun while you're at it, uh, the corpses can also be used to move cars. So you can like pull double duty if you want. And this is kind of a cool car, actually. I might come back for it, but uh, we're just moving corpses for now. Okay, there we go. I don't know if this is supposed to be a male or a female. It might be a female. So we'll just call it Sam. Is that going to be a male or a female name? And we'll see if Sam stays there for the rest of the time. That'll be Sam's Corner. <laughs> I may even put some neon lights that say Sam's Corner right there. And uh, we'll see if that works. <laughs> So, oh, I got to change this. I think we're on 59, maybe? But uh, anyway, there you guys go. So with the help of a fellow classmate, thanks, Lunifer, this is how you rid your settlements of those annoying respawning bodies, all without the need for mods. Hope you guys found this video helpful. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Throw a like on the video, and I'll be back soon with more fun stuff. Happy building, and class dismissed.